Hi, I'm uh, George Dapermos, and I'm here for ProCommunis. Okay, George, how do you see the relationship between community events like this and the decentralized online ways we interact around these issues like the commons and policy? I think uh, they complement each other. They provide individuals with a space where they can actually get to meet one another, discuss in depth those issues they're interested in. So, in a sense, they provide people in those movements with a critical physical infrastructure. Okay. Is there a difference between a digital community and offline communities in the context of the commons movement? Well, uh, they're certainly not the same thing, but uh, I consider them once again complementary to each other. So, they're not different movements. It's the same movement interacting in more or less slightly different environments. Okay, great, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Please identify yourself. So my name is Loretta Nania and I'm a project officer with the European Commission. I'm responsible for the peer-to-peer -peer value project. Great, we'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, how do you see the relationship between events like ProCommunis and the decentralized online ways we interact around issues like commons policy. Well, the two events, type of events, are complementary. But I think that the remarkable number of people that have come here for this real event surprised even the organizer. What is important is the support of the local government authorities and the two or three languages that were spoken. So these things do not happen on online. So online events come and go, but if you want to build communities of action, and CAPS is about building communities of action and citizen engagement, you need these real events for real people to become friends and work for a common cause. I see. I would also like to ask you if, in your opinion, there is a difference between digital community and offline community in the context of the commons movement. Well, the commons movement has a lot to do with keeping the internet free and open to small, to small users. And so I think that there, I wouldn't see a difference. In fact, you need the online to have a global, if not a European policy. And I think this was one of the topics that one of the ladies told me brought tears to her eyes. So this, this issue of keeping the internet open, decentralized, for free speech is something that affects people very, very deeply, not to be underestimated. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think have a good day. These kind of in-person events are really super important because you get to meet people and you have, uh, you have an opportunity to get to know them in person. And also, I'm highly dissatisfied with the actual online options that we have right now, and that's an area that we actually need to address as a community. There's a social difference in that some people maybe feel more comfortable discussing things online where they may feel less comfortable in person, but in essence it's, the, uh, it's an extension of the same community. Thank you so much. It's the end. Hi. So you are? I'm Rachel O'Dwyer. I'm uh, currently a Government of Ireland Research Fellow at Williams University and I work with the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation as well. Okay, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, first, uh, how do you see the relationship between community events like this and the decentralized online ways we interact around issues like commons policy? Well, I think there's advantages to both ways of, of coming together and collaborating. So, on the one hand, I suppose being based in Dublin, uh, quite a lot of my networks are a uh, take place online. So the work I do at Peer2Peer -peer Foundation, a lot of my academic and research work happens through online communities. So there's a lot of utility in terms of being able to collaborate and communicate and uh, make decisions and even delegate tasks online. But at the same time, there's, I think, very significant uh, limitations to that kind of digital collaboration. Um, where yeah, I think it's, it's very important to come together face to face. And I also think, um, yeah, there's maybe shared experiences that, that happen when you meet people face to face and it's very, very difficult to cultivate in an online community. And also that meeting people face to face allows for different kinds of accidental things to happen or allows you to maybe meet people who don't share your viewpoints and have those discussions, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, uh, it does. Yeah, in the way that maybe digital 
allows you to just often interact with people who hold the same views as you. You know, if you think of how like Twitter feeds or even Facebook is constructed, you 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 get a lot of your viewpoints kind of being put back at you. Maybe that happens less when you're forced to meet people face to face. Okay. Sorry. I would also like to ask you if, in your opinion, there is a difference between online community and offline community in the context of the commons movement. Yeah, um, I don't know if, I, if I'm understanding it. I think there, there's a difference, but it's really, really important to try and break those down. And I think that difference isn't just about people who are interested in the digital commons and people who are interested in um, uh, maybe more forms of kind of material or social reproduction. So, so there's there's that but then there's also you know people who are using maybe technology for commenting and people who are who are looking at other kinds of methods uh, I think what we need to, we really really need to try and break down that distinction between sort of a maybe a digital commons and a material commons and those kinds of practices uh, I think people who work with technology need to maybe develop more humility and actually learn a lot from people who have experience with organizing if that makes sense. I'm thinking of, of um, yeah, quite a lot of the work sometimes there's a sense that the technology can provide the, the answer. Like if we just find the right decentralized platform that we can, we can uh, reproduce the right kind of society. So I think there's, while those tools are really, really important, there's, there's maybe room for um, uh, yeah, learning from people who actually have experience in, in organizing and, and actually cultivating movements. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you so much, Rachel. In, in both cases, I think that what uh, this kind of uh, gathering you know, of people and practices uh, show up or, or demonstrate is, is that we all need these these moments of concentration, you know, on focusing, trying to, to clarify what sometimes becomes very difficult online because it's, it's this kind of attention economy, even if it's a, at a, a, a in your own uh, collaborative economy environment, it's it's kind of crazy sometimes. You know? So all, all these kind of convergence movements uh, help to then move again in different directions, and, and, and I, I see them like flows of, of you know opening up and concentrating. So I think they are key uh, moments on time for for realizing that that this you know common. Uh, approach and, and, and similar fights or, or challenges, no? So in a way they give structure to the offline discussions yeah, take, yeah. taking place. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I don't know, I mean, at a very conceptual level, sometimes when we make the difference between online and offline, I think that we, we are uh, not simplifying, but we're making the thing uh, like cool and it's not at all, no? I mean, since we have every mobile in our pocket, uh, and we are in these conferences, opening the laptop and, and, and telling something to someone on the other side of the world. Right. Um, maybe that difference is, is not that useful anymore. No? So it's uh, maybe more uh, the physical contact of, 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 of recognizing someone for the first time uh, after being uh, an online friend or, or partner for, for, you know, for a long period. No? Which brings us to the follow-up question. All right. uh, whether there is a difference between online and offline communities in the context of the commons movement. But you you answer this to a large extent, that you basically see them as complementary and that's not something which is distinct. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I think I, I used to be very uh, skeptical uh, some times ago about, about the community term, uh, especially when, when you apply it online, you try to apply it to something that, that it's difficult to consider as boundaries uh, or, or norms. or but thinking a little bit more about the commons uh, and, and how digital tools are, are, are there no? to stay, are here to stay and are, are, are conditioning and, and influencing for good and for bad. Maybe the, the term community is, 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 is important again uh, to, to try to understand who are you with and who is not aligned with, with the kind of future you want. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in this kind of terms uh, that we are fighting with all the time. Okay, let's go for collaborative economy with the adding of commons. Uh, commons collaborative economy, I think it's, it's a, a kind of take back the term of collaborative economy to, to, to the roots. And maybe we have to do a similar thing with uh, the term community or work with it a little bit more. No? Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Stako Tromkoso from the P2P Foundation. Hello Stako, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, how do you see the relationship between community events like ProCommons and the decentralized online ways we interact around issues such as commons policy? Well, it depends on the event. Um, this event is a good example because you have a fixed structure 
you have a timeline, you have certain talks at certain times, but really people self-organize and they get together and they create common value without anyone really directing it. So to me, this is like a mini internet in our idealized version of what the original internet was, which is this distributed network of people creating value and communicating with each other. So I don't know, if you think about like, like an art installation, events like this are an art installation of the internet that we want to have. Okay, I see. Uh, I would like to ask you one more thing. Uh, in your opinion, is there a difference between digital communities and online communities in the context of the commons movement? Well, I think there's a continuum because digital communities are made up of people who do interact physically. I do think that the real life meet space interaction as a reference point for people that you may be walking with long distance is essential. It's essential. Um, digital collectives, there is often um, big misunderstandings and you see this in discussion groups where um, controversies are blown out of proportion. Oh. And when you get to meet people face to face, you have that reference point and you have that impulse to keep creating together and overcoming the difficulties that come associated with, with digital relationships and networks. Okay, thank you, Stacco. Hi, thank you, George. Okay, hi, I'm Hilary Wainwright, and I'm in Barcelona. It's a really, really exciting, stimulating conference of the commons and the cooperative economy, collaborating in order to put proposals to the, the very um, radical and open um, government of Barcelona municipality uh, called uh, Barcelona en Commun. So um, I'm also in, involved in Britain in um, a, red, a cooperative magazine called Red Pepper. I'm a co-editor and I'm a fellow of the Transnational Institute in Amsterdam. And I'm interested in, in a way, in the combination um, of the new economy emerging around the commons and, and, the, and the collaborative cooperative economy. Um, and on the other hand, the new politics, which is emerging in Spain with Podemos, in Britain with Jeremy Corbyn, um, and emerged in Greece with Syriza. And the last example shows that this new politics is not without its problems. You know, maybe it's not got rid of some of the, or learnt some of the problems of the old politics. So this area is is a, a, an area of um, investigation as well as action. Okay. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you. No, oh, that's great. That, that, that's really interesting context. So what I wanted to ask you about was this specific conference and how you think that this conference format relates to the way that we organize ourselves online in decentralized networks. Do you find a resonance here with what's going on these days? Yes, I mean, I feel that there's got to be um, a connection. We can't say, okay, we're going to move beyond the um, face-to-face. I mean, to me, the online is a tool for the face-to-face -face because you know, human beings are social, so they want to connect, but they're also embodied. So when we connect, we like to connect through our bodies and our and seeing people and our emotions, as well as exchanging information and exchanging, you know, ideas and references and all the kind of things that you can do online. So. For me, a conference like this is, is, it inspires me because I meet people who are inspiring because of what they've done, because of their, their relationships with each other and with me. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't really be as engaged as I am if it was all online. I mean, I, I, I hugely benefit in terms of you know, participation and organization from the online tools, but they're always, in a certain way, tool, well, they are tools, they're not the be-all and end-all, and they're not the only way to communicate and be social. It's got to be that yeah. bodily, human contact. So, how do you see the interfaces between the digital community and the human community? How, how, how do they complement each other? 
Hmm. Well, I suppose in the most obvious way, um, the online community helps you reach out to a wider range of people than you can um, be in touch with offline. I mean, you know, offline conferences are very expensive, particularly international ones. So I think, in a way, the and offline communications are expensive. So I think the online um, tools are particularly important in um, extending our international communications. And international communications are hugely important. I mean, not only because we're up against an international enemy, the global corporation, the, the corporate-driven global market, the, 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 the sort of political geography of, of US domination, um, but, but also in a way international communications enables us to make comparisons, to learn from each other, you know, the, even the comparisons between what's happening in Spain and what's happening in Britain, you know, and you can get an inspiration by face-to-face -face discussion, but then you want to follow it up, you want to keep in touch and um, you, you, you can only really do that online given the limited resources that we all have. Yeah, excellent, thank you so much for your time. Okay, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. I am Primavera de Filippi, I'm a researcher at the CNRS in Paris. Thank you, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, to begin with, how do you see the relationship between community events like this and the decentralized online ways we interact around issues like uh, commons policy? So, um, well, obviously they are complementary, but uh, from my personal experience, I've been actually favoring a lot online communication to begin with, and I actually thought for a long time that this was enough, and that uh, there is, you know, as long as you can communicate, then why, why would you actually need to go and meet in place? And uh, for like many, many years, I actually have been interacting like exclusively online with people and actually managing to, to get things done and to communicate quite correctly. And then eventually I actually started realizing that sometimes meeting people face to face actually changes a lot. Huh? It's actually fun, first of all, but uh, it's actually also necessary in order to immensely improve the online interaction. So even if you meet just once, but you actually establish some kind of, you know, you see the face of the person that you're talking with on the internet, it's actually quite useful. <laughs> and then you can actually, you know, go on afterwards online because you already have this uh, physical and emotional rapport with the person so that you can actually uh, interact in a really much more productive way. Okay. And I would also like to ask you if, in your opinion, there is a difference between digital community and uh, offline community in the context of the commons movement. Well, I mean, I think that online communities eventually are also offline communities. Um, in terms of, yeah, in terms of uh, communication mechanisms, I guess they differ, but I would argue that there is indeed uh, a need for those to eventually for digital community eventually to actually turn into physical communities so to have gathering and to meet together and vice versa I will say that most physical communities will also benefit greatly from digital communication. Alright, thank you so much Primavera. Thanks to that you. That was a very interesting interview with my face here instead of Primavera. Because the interviewer <laughs> is actually never visible in the interview, it's a pity. It's just as valuable as the interviewee. So on behalf of uh, the interviewer's team, Goodbye. Yes. Uh, please uh, say your name for our viewers. Hi, I'm Derek, uh, and I work with It's Viral in New Zealand. Uh, I would like to ask you a couple of questions, Derek. Uh, first of all, uh, what, in your opinion, is the relationship between community events like the one we just attended and the distributed online ways we interact around issues such as common schools? Sure. Um, probably the most tangible link is between the uh, personal relationships that get built in these one-on-one uh, -on -one spaces um, and the work that we go on to do together. Um, I've always 
found that uh, doing work with people is uh, a really, really great way to build trust. And that trust then becomes a foundation that you can use to do more and more ambitious and impactful work together. Cool. There is a follow-up question I would like to ask you. Uh, whether in your opinion there is a difference between online and offline community in the context of uh, the Commons movement? Yeah, we, uh, we've actually done a bunch of experiments with this uh, in the context of like uh, CoBudget and Lumio and some of the software tools that we've been developing uh, in Inspiral and uh, it's, the short answer is it's complicated. Um, the longer answer is um, I think that we have a lot to learn about what the role of online communities is in collaborative action, research, development, uh, as opposed to place-based communities. Um, from what I've seen, uh, place-based communities are much easier to uh, convene, coordinate, work through issues, um, and online communities tend to be about loose-knit connections. Um, and these two loose-knit and strong connections are good for different things, right? Um, the, uh, lots of the movements and uprisings that have been coordinated over the last years in the Middle East have, been, have happened through like Facebook groups and stuff. These are large, yeah. loose-knit networks, but uh, you know, those are good for certain things, but they're not good for other things. Okay. Thank you so much, Derek. Cool. Thank you. My name is Sibyl Saint-Giron. I'm coming from France. And I'm happy to be here. How do you see the relationship between community events like this and the decentralized online ways we interact around these issues of the commons, policy, etc.? So I see common uh, a relation because in this type of event we can all share what we are doing uh, alone. So it's a point of connection. And because there is not only this event that could make a centralized, centralized point, but many events everywhere, so we can say there is a federated uh, <laughs> ecosystem of events. Yeah. And what I would like is that we share more the information, the key essential points that are um, found in each event that um, we can share and um, uh, value. Mm -hmm. what is uh, fine and not again uh, starting from scratch in each event so if it can be more federated more distributed and yes it's a place where we can meet and uh, connect and uh, uh, make the cause uh, yeah. going on okay great so is there a difference between a digital community and an offline community in the context of the commons movement there is some common points and some differences. The common point is trust, and it's knowing each other. You will relate with people you know, so is it in digital or in physical, and that you acknowledge and you understand what their value, what their skills, who they are. Mm -hmm. And maybe the difference that in the digital we can uh, choose when we relate, we will choose really specifically what we say so we can maybe appear a bit with our avatar and not yeah. in our real uh, all our facets and uh, difficulties and while in a um, physical community you involve your all beings mm -hmm. so I think it's a bit, a bit more challenging uh, physical communities and the two needs to happen mm -hmm. and um, to nourish some, uh, each other and maybe at the end, the digital community is to create physical community. Yeah, uh, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saco. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. So please tell us who you are. Nuria del Rio from Madrid. And what are you doing in Madrid? I uh, was involved in solidarity economy networks for more than 10 years, 15 years for me. And I do several things around, I don't know, Social, how to how to create solutions for social problems. Okay. Just <laughs> summarize like this. Okay. Thank you for agreeing to talk to us. I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. First, uh, what do you think is the relationship between community events like the one we just attended mm -hmm. and the distributed online ways we use to interact around issues like commons-based policy? Okay. It's like uh, you know when you're imagine. A travel or thinking about traveling or uh, about a meeting or about a 
Yeah, a gathering with some friends. This is a part of uh, the previous part of thinking what to do, how to do it, if we're reading something or maybe choosing the menu. And after is the gathering in itself. So you can exchange, you can give hugs to the people and you can be challenged also because some, sometimes reading things challenge you. The challenge is in, is an inter, uh, in a mental level. Then when somebody is trying to push you with uh, words or, or replying very fast to your arguments, it's different. You, you, the impact is harder and the networking is different. So it's, for me, it's a, it's a complementary way to relate. Okay. Which brings us to our follow-up question. Uh, do you think there's a difference between digital community and offline community in the context of the commons movement? Yeah. Uh, I think the stable part of it maybe is the online. The online is always there. You can use it at night and in summer and anytime. And when you have the idea or you have the, 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 the need to use it, it's always there and it's like a repository, it's like a library. And the, the offline or presential in, in person meetings is more like, um, again, it's, it's a place where you test and you challenge and you you can you can really decide if it's if all the things that you plan it's really that you plan like you plan or not and make some adjustment so it's like the short but main opportunity and the calm and everyday opportunity the, the online is the calm and everyday opportunity Okay, <laughs> thank you, Nuria. Uh, I am Daniel Boursier, I am from Paris. I, I am a scientific lead of uh, Creative Commons. It's, uh, it's why I'm interested in my commons in general, not only digital commons. Okay, so um, how do you see the relationship between events like this one that we're attending and the ways that we collaborate and relate to each other online? Okay, so that's a very good question. Uh, I, I, I will try to, to have a, a very, a very uh, astucious, uh, tricky uh, answer. So I think that uh, uh, why it is interesting uh, to, to interfere in this type of place? Uh, because I, I think that the inter interaction, interrelation uh, in, on, online is uh, very limited, very limited because uh, you have a special type of uh, discourse you you have not your body is not in the mail of course and uh, because i am uh, very interested by uh, all the phenomena of serendipity i think uh, serendipity cannot uh, happen on, on uh, in email between email between in a wiki it's, it's very very rare you know why serendipity is interesting because it is totally unexpected you know and when you, you meet somebody in a, in a place like that you, you, it's completely unexpected what we can discuss together and a lot of projects in my opinion uh, came from these uh, meetings you know uh, where people are totally uh, they don't think about something but uh, something emerge because they are together in, in the same context yeah, so I think that you've actually answered the second question, which was, what's the difference between digital communities and offline communities? But if you want to add anything else? No, I think uh, it's enough. I think uh, everybody, we can uh, have this the same experience with Creative Commons. We, Creative Commons is a very dynamic community, but every two years we, we have a meeting in a place in the world, you know, and this place, it, it, it cannot be replaceable, you know? Okay, thank you so much.